Hi students, welcome to my lectures on mechanical unit operations. In today's class, we are going to discuss about the power requirements for an agitator in kilowatts or horsepower. Agitation is one of the important unit operations in the chemical industries. To mix two substances or two liquids or I mean uh, semi solids or to keep anything in a suspension mode people use the agitators. In such cases for different capacity systems there is a different power requirements for the agitators. Today we are going to see what are the different kind of agitators are available and if given how to estimate the power requirements for an agitator. As you can see on the board there are two different kinds of uh, impellers that are available for the mixing. Okay. Ultimate agenda is to find out how much power is required to rotate an agitator for a given system. You can find many kinds of agitators. Something push the liquids to the sidewards which are called radial flow and few push the liquids to the downwards which called axial flow. So one you can see here this particular turbine I mean agitator pushes the liquid to the sideways I mean towards from the center to the side. So this is called radial flow. Typically you see this kind of radial flow impellers in the industries turbines, paddles these are uh, use this kind of system. The another kind of agitators people use this called propellers. The propeller will push the liquid to the downwards. Imagine a submarine in, a submarine is going in a sea, under the sea. It pushes the liquid backwards and the submarine moves forward. So this kind of axial flow impellers are called propellers. Okay? It will push the liquid from top to the bottom. So broad category. There could be three fined or a three fa I mean a three blade, four blade, eight blade. Here also turbine also it could be four blade turbine, five blade turbine, six blade turbine depending upon the requirement people go for this kind of systems. Okay, what is the today's objective? If you see here the objective today is to find the power required. Suppose you have to rotate this impeller, how much power I have to draw, how much power I have to put into the impeller so that it can rotate at a certain RPM at 60 rotations per minute or 70 rotations per minute depending upon the requirement. So in such cases what is the power required for the agitation in terms of kilowatts, watts, horsepower, anything. Conditions in, uh, in I mean uh, in the agitators there could be presence of baffles at the side. Baffles keep at the sides of the I mean a tank to promote the mixing. Okay. If the baffle, baffles are there, the rotate will try to hit the baffle and come again to the impellers. So this is called baffle tanks. There are systems, they are called non-baffle tanks. In such cases, there are no baffles, it's simply the liquid rotates having some small vertex at the top. It's a kind of whirlpool system. You see any whirlpool? If there is no baffles that are, it's a, a liquid will continuously rotate and form a whirlpool inside. Okay, kinds of vortex. In technical terms, it is called vortex formations. So in non-baffle tanks, the vortex formations occurs. So power requirement for the baffle tank and power required for the unbaffled tank are different. Typically, the power required in unbaffled tank is higher than the baffle tank. Because mixing will not happen if baffles are not there. What happens? It will create a vortex. So to mix the things, I don't want any vertex. To avoid vertex, what happens? I try to rotate with higher speeds, I mean, to promote more mixing, okay. But in case of baffle tank, with less power itself, I can create more mixing. So that's what the difference. Objective, power requirement, conditions. Am I talking about the baffle tank or unbaffle tank? Okay. To calculate the power, I need these three things. One is power number, second is agitator Reynolds number which I have discussed in my I mean previous lectures. Third thing is Froude number. If three 
three things are available with me, I can calculate the power requirements. What is the power number? How it is defined by P? That is power in kilowatts or joules per I mean power in terms of watts means joules per second. Density of the fluid inside the tank and how much rotations per second the agitator is revolving that is n di is the diameter of this particular impeller okay what is the agitator Reynolds number di square into n into rho by mu what is da again the diameter of the impeller or the fan you can think n is the rotations per second density of the liquid viscosity of the solution Froude number n square di by g what uh, n square di by g is the gra uh, acceleration due to gravity if i know the three things i can calculate the power number how the relationship between because if i know the power number Reynolds number Froude number i can calculate the power what is the relationship between these three the relationship between the power number is nothing but k times the agitator Reynolds number power m and Froude number power n if you know the constants k m n Reynolds number and Froude number you can calculate the power number once you know the power number inside the power number the power is there so you can calculate the power so the, I think there are two cases I told you one is this relationship can be applied for baffled tank this relationship can be applied for unbaffled tank in baffled tank vortex will not come because vortex comes when there is no obstruction if I put a baffle here, there is some obstruction, the vortex formation will not take place because the fluid will hit the baffle and come back to the again to the impeller. Okay. Yeah. Here you can see, observe, the Froude number is not there because Froude number comes when there is a vortex formation is there. Because I am talking about the baffle tank, there are baffles existing, there is no vortex formation. If there is no vortex formation, do not consider the Froude number. Froude number will be considered only only when the vertex formation is going to take place. Okay. If you know the constants K, M, agitator Reynolds number, you know the power number. Once you know the power number, you can calculate the power. Let us case the unbaffled tank. Unbaffled tank means there are no baffles. That means the vertex formation takes place. If the vertex formation takes place, you have to consider the Froude number. But if the Reynolds number agitator Reynolds number is less than 300 example slowly revolving systems even though the baffles are not there vertex formation also will not be there so when the Reynolds number is very low even though it's an unbaffled tank you don't need to worry about the Froude number once Reynolds number is greater than 300 the vertex formation takes place in the unbaffled tank then you have to consider the Froude number so once you know the K, M, N, Reynolds number and Froude number, you know the power number. Once you know the power number, you can calculate the power. So this is what the whole situation is. What is another way to calculate the power number? Whole idea is to calculate the power number. Once you know the power number, you know the power. How to calculate the power number? I told you, either you get the values of K, M, N, you calculate the power number. The second way is graphs are existing. Once you know Reynolds number versus power number graphs are there. Reynolds number versus I mean, um, uh, fraud number graphs are there. Fraud number, versus, I mean, there are different graphs are existing. Once you know the Reynolds number, you go to the particular graph and find the power number. This is the one way is to know the constants and find the power number. Second way is the know the graph and find the power number. So these are the different ways of calculating situ situations. There is a small example. Let us calculate the what is the power requirement for this. An agitator which is having 50% NaOH solution, having impeller diameter of 60 centimeter, height 60 centimeter, and this total height is 1.8 meter, and 60 meter from the bottom the impeller height is 60 centimeter. So, given this system, given the rotations 90 rotations per minute, that means now the agitator is moving uh, at a speed of 90 rpm. So, if this is the situation, what is power that is required for the impeller? Okay, given diameter is point, impeller is 0.6, rpm n 90 rpm that is 90 by 60 rotations per second that is 1.5 rotations per second. Density of the fluid inside the tank is 1450 kg per meter cube. Viscosity is 10 cp that is 0 0.01 kg per meter second or Pascal second viscosity units. And a, a table is given. 
okay. From this table you can plot on y axis the power number on the x axis the Reynolds number. So, this is the data is given. Given this data, how to calculate the power number? Okay, let us go to the, uh, the other side of the board. Okay, the thing is, it's a baffled tank. In case of baffled tank, I told you, you don't need to worry about the fraud number because there is no vertex formation. So, whatever the data that is given, power number and the Reynolds number data, I have plotted here. And given from this plot, I can, if you know the Reynolds number, you know, if I know the agitator Reynolds number, I know what is the power number from this graph. Okay. Let us calculate agitator Reynolds number. Di square n into rho by mu. If I put all the relevant, uh, I mean, uh, data and found out the 78,300. Okay. Agitator Reynolds number. So, if I found on the graph, this is a 78,000, something close to 80,000. If I draw a straight line, it hits the curve at certain point. At this point, what is the power number is close to 6, okay. That is why at Reynolds number is 7, you know, agitated Reynolds number 78,300 something, the power number is 6. Once I know the power number, what is the power number? P by rho n cube di power 5 equal to 6. What is P? 6 times rho n cube di power 5. If I put all the values of RPMs, densities and impeller diameters, I get 2283 kg meter square per second cube. It is nothing but joules per second. That is nothing but watts. Okay. And if the power required, so the power required is 2283 watts. It is nothing but 2.283 kilowatts. If I convert the kilowatts to horsepower, it is 3.1 horsepower. That means power required to rotate this NOH solution at a speed of 90 rpm, the power that I am going to have to fit the motor of capacity 3.1 HP. Okay. Problem number two. This the earlier problem is called baffle tank. The second is same tank. Now I have removed the baffles. The moment I remove the baffles, the fraud number has a significant role because the vortex formation takes place. And even the Reynolds number is also greater than 300 the fraud number has an effect. So, if I remove the baffles to rotate at the same RPM, same mixing to takes place, what is the new power that is required? That is new motor I have to fit if I remove the baffles. And corrected power number, it is called to baffle tank power number. That means we have calculated, right? For baffle tank, the power number is 6, something around. The equation you are supposed to use, you have to correct the power number now. The corrected power number is baffle tank power number into fraud number power n, okay? I know the baffle tank power number 6, I have got into fraud number power n if I take. Then from this, the new power number will come. From this new power number, new power will come. n equal to given point. Uh, minus 0 0.097. From this, I can, I mean, I know the fra fra fraud number n square in di by z. Once I know fraud number power n 1.212. If I know the fraud number power n, put it within the equation. I know already know baffle tank power number is 6 from my data. Into fraud number power n, you put it here. Corrected power number is 6 times the fraud number power n. The power number, now I know this value. What is the power, corrected power number? It is called power unbaffled tank. This is the power of unbaffled tank I have to found out. It is power of unbaffled tank the density into n cube into di power 5. Put this equation here and you get P U B. That means unbaffled is 6 times 1.212, the entire number. So from this P U B is equal to 6 into rho into n cube di power 5 into 1.212. I already know 6 into rho into n cube di power 5, 2283. Simply multiply 1.212 and you get 2766.9 watts means 2.76 kilowatts means 3.76 horsepower. From this you can see if I keep baffles, okay, I need only 3.1 HP motor for the mixing. If I remove the baffles, I need 3.76 HP motor because if I remove the baffles, vortex formation has taken place. 
and mixing will not happen. If mixing will not happen, I have to rotate at higher speeds. So that is why the power required for the unbaffled tank is higher than the baffled tank. I hope you have learned something new and let me come with a new video. Thank you very much.